What causes scoliosis in adults? Scoliosis affects all ages, from babies to elderly and everybody in between. Scoliosis is most prevalently diagnosed in adolescence, and this is diagnosed between the age of 10 and 18 years of age, and this is something that we call adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. Why scoliosis is most commonly diagnosed in children, it turns out that the greatest population of patients with scoliosis is associated with age, meaning as we look at a greater, as, as patients' age groups increase, for meaning from you know, eight to 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 50 to 60. As age groups increase, so does the percentage of patients with scoliosis. In fact, the greatest population with scoliosis is elderly adults, 70, 80 years of age. More, greater percentage of these patients have scoliosis than children. Now, why is this? Because what we are seeing is a culmination of not only all the adolescent cases, but all the adult onset scoliosis cases, which we'll talk about in a second. Now, when we look at scoliosis, we know there are different types, but the most common type is something called idiopathic scoliosis. And idiopathic scoliosis is when there's no associated single cause. We don't know why it's happening, and this counts for 80% of all diagnosed scoliosis cases. The remaining 20% of scoliosis cases are associated associated with known causes. And this is something called neuromuscular scoliosis, degenerative scoliosis, and congenital scoliosis, which we'll talk about these in a second. Now, the most common type of scoliosis that affects adults is, like I mentioned, idiopathic scoliosis. Now, these are either cases of adolescent scoliosis, now in the adult form that were diagnosed. These are all cases of undiagnosed scoliosis patients now in the adult form. Now, we don't believe we catch the majority of adolescent scoliosis during adolescent. In fact, we believe the majority of cases go undiagnosed because they never become severe enough. We believe a small percentage progress to, this, uh, to a, a size where they can actually be diagnosed as a child. So we believe the vast majority of cases go into the adult form undiagnosed. Now, scoliosis doesn't always cause notable symptoms in children, meaning as they're growing, if the curve doesn't become big enough to cause a postural deviation, they don't feel any kind of pain or any kind of problems, and therefore the curve stays as a mild, it never really progresses during growth, so therefore it doesn't cause any kind of pain or discomfort. The, the curve doesn't become big enough to cause any kind of postural deviation for a diagnosis to occur, so many of these patients go into the adult form undiagnosed. Even patients that are diagnosed in the adolescent form, once they become an adult, they're told not to worry about it, just you know, go on and live your life, and they're not told to continue to monitor their scoliosis or maintain their scoliosis, and what they're not told is curves still progress in the adult form. And this is why scoliosis becomes painful in the adult form, because curves unfortunately still progress. So no matter where you stop growing at, so if you stop growing with a 10 degree curve, or a 20 degree curve, 30, 40, 50, whatever curve that you stopped growing, the curve doesn't stop there. It still progresses in the adult form, but now it doesn't progress because of growth. Now it progresses as a result of gravity over time. And this gravity over time causes compression to the scoliosis is, and slowly causes it to increase. This slow compressive nature leads to scoliosis pain. And normally the pain starts off very mild and very slow and very achy and tends to increase as the curve worsens and as you become older to somewhere around 40 or 50 years of age where it starts becoming relatively significant. We start seeing this as this compressive nature occur, continues to occur and it still is causing a scoliosis type of pain. We tend to see this pain tend to increase its rate somewhere 50 to 55 years of age. And then we also tend to see a compounding effect that the scoliosis progression is occurring, meaning as the curve worsens, it starts progressing faster. And therefore this age and and progression and size all tend to increase itself exponentially. So we see 60 years of age patients start coming in and getting diagnosed with scoliosis because they're complaining of so many issues. And even if they knew they had scoliosis as a child, they discount their scoliosis because their scoliosis didn't have pain as a child, even though now it's progressing as a result of a different problem, meaning compression over time, which now leads to pain. The pain doesn't have to just relate or limit itself to spine. It can cause pain writing down into the legs. It can cause lower extremity pain. It can cause joint pains in hips and knees and feet because as a result of the scoliosis causing all 
all this asymmetrical pressure, it can lead to like things that affect the lower extremity because of the asymmetrical weight bearing. Now, by far the largest group of adult patients that get diagnosed are adolescent cases that were undiagnosed and now are progressing in the adult form. But there is another type, and I like to call this degenerative scoliosis. Now, degenerative scoliosis is also called de novo scoliosis, and de novo is another way of saying of new scoliosis. Degenerative scoliosis is when something happens to the spine as a young adult, and it slowly, it causes a very small shift. And this very small shift remains uncorrected, but it causes that area of the spine to degenerate faster than the rest of the area of the spine. This degenerative area causes asymmetrical degeneration, causing the discs and the joints to become deteriorated. This disrupts all the adjacent vertebra and causes them to shift out of alignment with this area. And this degenerative scoliosis in this area will see an extensive amount of degeneration and damage relative to the rest of the spine. Normally, this is diagnosed somewhere around 50 plus years of age. It's more common in females, more common in the lumbar spine, and then it uh, and we tends to be associated with the onset of menopause in, William, in women, and most likely low back pain and leg pain is what we tend to see. Degenerative scoliosis is this type of process. Now, unfortunately, in the first type undiagnosed idiopathic adolescent scoliosis also has asymmetrical degenerative findings. So sometimes when we find a patient in the adult form that didn't know they had scoliosis, sometimes it's hard to distinguish these two because they present themselves symptomatically very, very similarly, and they, and they look similarly. But normally in a degenerative scoliosis, we'll see extensive damage in one area and not the rest. And the last type I'd like to talk about when adult onset scoliosis cases is something called traumatic scoliosis. Traumatic scoliosis is exactly what it sounds. It's when an adult patient goes through a significant trauma. Now, these traumas uh, can be obvious traumas like falls and car accidents and fractures and things that you would expect, like a physical trauma. But also internal traumas like disease and cancer and surgeries also have been known to initiate and cause scoliosis. So any kind of significant trauma can initiate a scoliosis, but the difference is it's not slow and progressive. It tends to be rapidly progressing. It tends to initiate the curve, causes some pain that occurs at that moment, and then it tends to progress relatively quickly from that moment on, and patients tend to see significant changes in their posture and body and pain. So this traumatic scoliosis can be very rapid and very quick, so therefore treating it quick is very, very important. Now, when we look at scoliosis treatment, it definitely there's a different treatment, different treatment approach in treating adults versus children. Most people associate scoliosis treatment with children because they associate traditional treatment options doing spinal fusion, or, just, or they look at traditional treatment options using Boston braces to try to slow down the progression. Now, even though we know growth is by far the biggest impact on progression and causes rapid progression in children. In adult cases, it's normally slow and steady. However, in later stage life, it can be relatively quick. So normally we're reacting just as fast as we do as in children in late stage adult life because we're trying to stop progression. Now, adults still worsen. And unfortunately, once they start worsening, their worsening is almost harder to deal with than an adolescent case, which I find very, very interesting because most adults are told not to worry about it and let it worsen and then deal with it if it becomes severe enough for surgery. But adult cases are harder to reduce. So since they're harder to reduce, their progression is more difficult to deal with than a childhood progression. So if you're ever gonna treat a patient quickly or sooner, it should be the adult, even though they may be gonna progress slower, but their effects are gonna be more significant and they're more likely to cause pain, and they're harder to recover what they, what they have they have gained. So treating adults, there is more time, meaning they're not going to progress as quickly, but the results tend to be harder. And with adults, normally we're facing pain, and pain itself could be a limiting factor because if patients are experiencing pain, where we normally don't have to deal with pain in children, sometimes we can't perform all the things we want to do with adult patients because they're in too much discomfort and pain. So while curve retraction is always our goal, in adults, we're trying to reduce curves back to where they were, where the pain, where the pain wasn't as significant, but normally we're trying to counteract this progressive nature of scoliosis as a result of compression. In addition, as we're reducing the curve and trying to reduce the pain, we're also trying to stabilize the spine, right? Stabilization is one key component when we look, when we look at adult treatments because normally 
as curves progress to become more deteriorated, and as they become more deteriorated, they become increasingly unstable, and their posture becomes more significantly misaligned, where gravity causes significant compression and more misalignment to occur. So even though the main cause of scoliosis in adults is untreated idiopathic adolescent scoliosis that was either undiagnosed or not treated, that's now progressing in the adult form, we definitely know treating adults requires a different approach, but they're as important to treat as adolescents. Even though our mind thinks scoliosis, we think children, the vast majority of patients with scoliosis are adults. So we recommend and we focus on adult patients to try to get their spines to reduce, their curves to reduce, and we recommend doing it as soon as you know about your scoliosis, because the sooner you treat it, even before it becomes relatively severe or before it becomes severely symptomatic, the more likely you're not gonna be experiencing the problems in later stage life as a result of your scoliosis. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.